it's going to be assumed if you're watching this video, you're an actor or you'd like to start acting or you are just interested in what actors do. If not, then I have no reason why you're here, but welcome anyways. Hello, howdy, hi. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Victoria Marlone, and today we're going to be talking about my acting method. I have been writing everything and some. I believe with acting, it's a philosophy of doing. There's no such thing as too much knowledge and I don't ever want to get to a place where I'm overwhelmed because obviously it's all about in the moment. You can train so much, but how you perform sometimes gets overrided by your central nervous system and it is what it is, you know? <laughs> but over the course of the last three months, I have been breaking down the script of the film Barbie because I found that a very interesting film and I wanted to see how it was written. And since I had a good idea recently of what that film is like because I watched it in theaters a year ago and then one of my most recent flights, I watched it for the first half of my flight. So I have a pretty good idea and I obviously can just go back and stream it if I wanted to, to see how the actors performed the content of the script and what the final cut of it was. So I get an idea of what the director slash writers of the film, since the director was involved in the writing, what was written by Greta and Noah and what Margot, Ryan, Simu, Issa, like all these people, like how they performed the Barbies and the Kens and even the other supporting characters of the film. So my current acting routine, if I was given a script tomorrow for a television show or the piece of a play for my character to play. Usually you get a playbook, at least in my experience, the musicals I've done in the past and like the one play I did, we were given a book which had everything written in it or even a film script. Just if I was given my lines today and I was asked to portray this character, my first step of my routine would be deciding who my character is. I would want to know, all right, if I woke up tomorrow as this character, what are my interests? What are my dislikes? What do I do as fun? What is my social setting? How do I feel about myself, the world, other people? Like, who am I? Once I've made that decision, my step two to this would to be to immerse myself in these feelings and these mindsets. If my character despises something, I would take the time to look at images and videos and truly let myself be angry at it so I can know that emotion when I'm portraying it through the character. Or if I know my character loves rock music, I'm going on Apple Music, I'm going to the rock section, and I'm just going to listen to new and maybe more vintage older rock songs. And I'm going to find ones that I love. And as I'm reading my lines or as I'm meditating on the character, I'm listening to that music to get into the mindset of that character because that impacts how they do see, feel things. Now that I've decided on my character, I've immersed myself in this character, I'm now going to let myself sit in this character. I'm really going to meditate on who they are. Obviously they're not me, so I can't ask what would Vittoria do. I have to ask what would the name of this character do because it sounds like the other two steps I just said, but the difference is that ability to turn it on and turn it off. I watched the film Black Swan yesterday and I truly feel the character of Nina can be a character that would be easy to fall into. This idea of perfectionism, this rigid, unstable mindset. The second time seeing this yesterday kind of gave me a better view on this character and with Nina, I think the at least purpose of the story and the telling of this character was to show her battle between internally being the white swan and being the black swan because obviously on the surface she's a ballerina she's very focused on being a perfect ballerina specifically so she can't make any mistakes she has to be strict on her diet she goes to the extremes of kind of harming herself trying to achieve this perfectionism and then when selected as the primary ballerina, the principal of this show, she quite literally has this internal battle of being the black swan and the white swan. And I could easily see how training, diet, exercise, and learning these lines and trying to get into this mental headspace of someone who's deeply troubled could impact you as a person. But for me, that mindset shift, that sitting in the character would be 
Nina is currently the white swan. She struggles with not being perfect, not being to a T. She struggles with purity and childlikeness and this very naive being as herself. Like that's who Nina is. So how can I portray that as Nina? Like how do I shift my mindset into being this ballerina who's afraid to get a little messy, get a little rigid? But in the same breath, because of this character, how do I shift my mindset as Nina into this seductress, this woman who takes risks, this woman who's a little dark, the woman who wants what she wants, she's going to do whatever it takes to get what she wants, even if that means harming herself and others, like what, what are we going to do? Because something that Natalie Portman did in this role that I think was done well is she had the childlikeness of the white swan Nina. She had Nina when she was lucid. And then she had Nina when she was spiraling into this mindset of becoming the black swan. So she took these three different perspectives, personas of this one character. But at the end of the day, I'd like to think, because I don't obviously know her style of acting. I don't know what she's declared her own method, her own practice, her own philosophy. But if I was taking this character, if I was Natalie in that moment, I would have lucid Nina, white swan Nina, black swan Nina, but how do I turn that off at the end of the day and still be Vittoria? And so actually I'll continue using that example. So if I've gotten my script for the Black Swan and I've decided, okay, who is Nina? She's a ballerina. She has a rigid breakfast, lunch, dinner. She has a routine. She lives with her mother. She still has this childlike wonder about her in her bedroom. She wants to be the star ballerina. She wants to be the one that gets picked, but she's so in her mind about being like, the perfect image of a ballerina she doesn't even understand that that's not what is being sought for for that role okay i how have the basics of who is my character now that next step in my current philosophy is all right so i would be listening to tons of classical music we see that scene throughout the film where she's on the subway she's doing her makeup or she's just watching we kind of get glimpses into where she's unstable in those moments too but I'm going to assume Nina listens to a lot of the classical ballerina songs, songs we think of when we think of ballerinas. So that's the music I'd be listening to. I would know that someone like Nina is not eating deep fried fried food, fast food, not eating a lot of processed food. So I need to shift my mindset of like, okay, I need these whole foods to feed my body. I need to be rigorous, things that I would do like, oh, I don't want to work out today. Let me just pick up some Chipotle and call it a day she wouldn't do that she would eat the salad and go to her practice and keep practicing so those are just the little things i would decide on okay this is my character these are her likes these are her dislikes i would even tone into this mindset of like envy and jealousy because we see that throughout the film this character is very obsessive with wanting to be the best to the point where anyone else who gets even an ounce of attention we start to question okay why are they getting that and not me putting myself in those head head spaces and making those decisions of okay when i'm playing this character i need to be slightly anxious i need to be slightly obsessive and i need to be very rigid but at the end of the day if i'm on like a meal plan diet plan sure fine i gotta fit the character however when i go home how can i turn that off now that i've decided and sat in this character how can i removed myself from this character and now I've gotten my lines so every time I read my lines I look at what are my emotions going into the scene what are my emotions as I leave the scene and what am I trying to tell with the scene there's a popular scene in Barbie where Barbie just had this huge blowout party at the Barbie dream house and Ken is still hanging around and Ken wants to hang out he wants to spend the night he's like we're boyfriend girlfriend and then Barbie based on the script is supposed to be oblivious to this she's genuinely being nice when she says oh i don't want you here she's supposed to portray someone who does not want ken around because she wants to hang out with the other barbies and it's not supposed to be snobby it's not supposed to be aggressive because you could hear that and think oh that's so mean like why would she say that but in the script, the intention was that Barbie is being oblivious. She's very nice. She's overly nice. She's just genuinely confused. Why does Ken want to hang around? And so when you get your lines and you're focusing on your lines, you then need to become the lines, learn them. But with all that knowledge you've applied about who your character is, bringing that character into the lines themselves. So even at the end of Black Swan, when everyone 
is now aware of what Nina did. Nina became aware before that scene, but we see after Nina becomes aware of what happened, she sits down and she's crying, but then she's sucking it up and she's putting on her makeup and she's acting as if everything's fine. She gives it her all in what is potentially her last performance as she knows it. And she goes all out, she does a performance and then everyone's congratulating her, but then they realize what's happening to her. And I'm saying it like this, cause if you've never seen Black Swan, I don't want to spoil the film for you. And it's a very open ended ending in my opinion, but for a lot of people, we have the same assumption of what happens to Nina. And so when the director, I cannot think of his name right now, he's asking her like, what did you do? What did you do? She, instead of being afraid or happy or angry, she has this like very stoic, but self-fulfilled portrayal in this moment where she pretty much is just at this climax of everything. And as a character has decided what she has done is perfect. There's no fear. There's no sadness. There's no happiness. There's just this acceptance of this was perfect. I was perfect. And you have to know your lines and where you're coming from as your character to be able to portray that. Because there's a thousand ways you can say the line, but you have to know what your character would be thinking in that moment to say it in the way. And obviously the director may change their opinion on how they want you to say it. I've been on sets before. I've seen where someone's done, let's say a perfect job. And then the director's like, okay, cut. All right, I liked that, but I now want to see it like this, or we want to do it again like that. Like obviously the director is going to guide you in the way they want you to portray it. But before you even go on set, before you even read it with your fellow actors, you need to decide how would my character say this in this moment? And from a first glance, people would think, oh my gosh, like Nina should be happy. After everything we've been through in this film, Nina should be happy. But you don't see that portrayal of happiness or excitement or even fear because of what's going on with her. And if you've seen the film, you know what's happening to her in that moment. But there's just a contentment. The character, lucid or not, it's unaware if she's actually lucid or if she spirals one more time, is in a place of, I've achieved the ultimate goal of perfection. That's all that matters. Myself removed, I was perfect. This was perfect. I did what I needed to do. And that's the type of energy I want you to bring to your lines once you begin to memorize them. And just again, applying this mindset of what happened before the scene, what happens after the scene, and how am I as the character responding in the moment to this scene based on what we just left and what we're about to go into. So there's two more points. The first one being try three different versions. I kind of sneak peeked at that when I mentioned the director may give you different guidance based on what the director wants the scene to look like. So let's say my lines are, everything is wrong. You could portray that angry, but instead of angry, as we know, angry, yelling, screaming, lashing out, it could be that breaking point where you've just had a bad day and you're just like, everything is wrong. Everything is wrong everything's wrong and you are over it. I would say typically in high struggle situations where there's a party and there's planning and things are just blowing up. That's typically where you see someone in that moment where they just have a smile and they're just like, everything is wrong here. <laughs> Cause they know there's nothing they can do to fix it. Or you could portray it as everything is wrong. I think of The Devil Wears Prada, how Meryl Streep portrays Miranda Presley, I believe is the character's name. And happy, sad, no matter what, Miranda portrays like with the same tone, this very domineering to the point attitude in everything she does. And it's very revered and respected and a lot of people love the character for how she portrays it. And I think it's a great job. Obviously Meryl's a great actress. And that's what I think of as that second example of you don't show any stoic emotion. It's just everything's wrong. Everything is wrong. 
And then you could just have someone who's lashing out, disappointed. Maybe they're on the verge of tears. Maybe they're yelling and they're just like, everything is wrong. I think of Bella from Twilight actually, because she typically lashed out like that to Charlie and Jacob and Edward, and it portrays this teenage imbalance of emotions. So once you've decided on your character, you've learned who the character is, you've sat in that mindset shift of this is who they are and not who I am, how do I turn that on, turn that off? Once you learn the lines and you decide, okay, in this scene, I'm coming from this, I'm going into that, but in this moment, this is how my character responds. Now give yourself three versions. Practice those three versions. Don't rely on those three versions because again, the director may throw you a new version they want you to try. But when the director wants to do something different, you're not completely taken aback and unsure of what to do. I think of when I did musical theater and one of the characters I played, she was obsessed with another character. And so obviously the go-to with that would be being in love and being all oogly eyed and obsessed. But my play director, musical director at that time wanted there to be more of a mania to it. More of that like panini and chowder obsession so just think of three different ways and maybe even two ways normal one way with an accent just different ways that you can learn to like get into that scene than just one way thinking okay if i'm sad i'm crying if i'm angry i'm yelling if i'm happy i'm smiling remix it last tip and the last part of this video i should say is the idea of others now this may apply more to self tapes or auditioning but i think it applies to practice too if you're like me you have celebrities or public figures you like you dislike you're indifferent about you are you know a little crushy crush on and if you're like me you've got lights and tripods in fact i'm going to break the fourth wall here i have been doing the old hollywood lighting setup so i have four lights and they're all set up where I have a light hitting me head on, a light that's like slightly above me hitting one behind me, and then there's actually like a backlight. I've got a lot of lights hitting on me. And if I was practicing for a self tape, beyond my lighting, I'd probably tape someone I have a crush on if I'm doing like a romance scene. So like my celebrity crush, I would put him on one. And so when I'm saying these lines to this character that I have like this really big crush on, which I maybe have to experience that in real life because I'm actually potentially, if not even meeting this person, I may be able to see this person. Well, I am going to be seeing this person perform, but I may potentially see this person afterwards, which means I can now actually know that emotion of how it feels to be in the presence of like your celebrity crush. If I was doing a romance scene, putting a picture of my celebrity crush on the tripod, the extra tripod, I should say, or the light, and talking to them, visualizing them as the actor I'm working with. Or if I have a celebrity I don't like and my character in the self tape or in my practice is someone I don't like and I'm in a scene where maybe I'm playing a high school character and it's me versus my bully and I'm standing up to myself. I put that picture of that celebrity I don't like and I'm finally standing up for myself and I'm holding my ground and I'm deciding they aren't going to talk to me like this anymore. Having that visual allows you to really go for it because you kind of have that like one-on-one -on -one. and this helps a lot if you don't have someone that can help you with your lines or help you with you know just working on it again obviously if you're filming a self tip you may need someone to actually say the other words for you but if you're just practicing or you don't need a line reader having that visual will allow you to really just apply everything else that i've talked about in this video and let yourself really just let loose Thank you for watching this video. I promise there will be no gatekeeping here. I've got so much information that notebook I showed y'all earlier has right now about 10 pages worth of workshops, YouTube videos, notes from the internet, master classes, anywhere I learn acting information, I put it in that notebook. And I'm also again, breaking down Barbie and the pages and writing, okay, if I was Barbie, I'd be doing this, this, and this, and this, this, and that. And so I, that is like my current acting notebook. And these are just some of the things I've learned that are in that notebook that I would say are like my five steps I would do when I'm playing a new character. If I booked 
a reoccurring role tomorrow this is what i would do to learn who the character is if i was booking like a play tomorrow this is how i would apply myself into this character of this play because obviously all my dialogue set in stone there's not multiple episodes everything i would need is in that playbook this is just what i would do right now in my current acting philosophy of acting is doing and that just makes everything so much easier for me so if you enjoyed this don't forget to give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs down if this wasn't you or your speed i will not take it personally share with your friends who are actors or fellow actors if you are watching this as an actor yourself don't forget to subscribe for more content like this i do plan on trying to make more as i go and just can't say thank you enough i'm probably forgetting tons of things like subscribe click the bell all the good youtube spiel but as always you are important you are loved you are blessed and you for watching this and you're an actor you're an incredible actor do not give up on your journey and i hope to see you at work one day until then take care